Interpersonal Communications. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so if you're in my speech class, my public speaking class, this has nothing to do with you, but interpersonal. Woo! Chapter 7, part 85. I don't know where we're at. Okay, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I do. Here's the deal. We're studying intrapersonal communication, the who are you chapter, what I call the know yourself chapter. So then in chapter eight, we can talk about showing yourself to others and, and get back to interpersonal. Right now, intrapersonal, the communication happens inside your head, about you, by you. All right, so keep that in mind. We've talked about the definition for intrapersonal communication. We've given you some hints about this million dollar question, who are you? All right. We've talked about the values, the feelings, and the beliefs that make up part of it. We've talked about the labels. We've talked about where we get self-concept. We've talked about Maslow and the different stages up towards that transformational stage of Maslow, that self-emancipation or freedom stage called, you know, the what, what I call the self-enlightenment stage called self-actualization. We've talked about all of that. We've even shown you now how you can deviate from the norms of being you. Why does Tony not act like Tony all the time? Well, there's three of those deviations that we've discussed in detail in the last couple of se uh, segments. All right, so today, the last thing in this whole construct of who are you is uh, what we're going to call the roles that you play, roles. All right, so, so here's the scoop. Um, we'll, we'll show you a quick and simple definition, but let me just talk you through this, all right? Just think about, like, being an actor on the stage and having to act a certain way because you're that character. Basically, in, in sociological terms, in societal terms, that's what a role is. You play a different role based on your current social environment. And, and honestly, we as human beings get to adjust those roles. People change those roles all the time. But we get to choose how to plug ourselves into this thing called life. And then... Inside, the, inside those moments, those social moments, we play different roles, all right? Look at the definition here. Look at the definition. The, the way I'll, I'll explain it is these are the actions that we're expected to perform, the expected actions based on our social environment. And, and if I give you some examples, you're going to get you're going to get it. This is not rocket science, okay? Your role, your role at school is student, and you act according to that social environment, right? Right? You, you don't swear much of the time. You, you don't, you, you know, you don't sit in the back of the classroom and, and smoke ever, okay? There are, there are actions because you're in that role that fit the role and you and you acquiesce you act accordingly then let's say let's say let's pretend you go off to your part-time job as a fleet farmer so you go to fleet farm you have a expected concept of actions within that role of cashier let's say at fleet farm and you act accordingly you're never angry with the customer because the customer is always right. No matter what you really want to say to those people, you don't because you're expected to act within that role of polite fleet farmer cashier. If you have a, a synagogue, a, a, a church or a temple, you fit into a role as soon as you walk in that door. Tony's not going to prom. Remember that example? If he stands up during the middle of, uh, of Sunday service and starts screaming at Tina, okay, his actions are going to be driven and dictated by that role that he is in, in that social moment. So now, th that complicates us too. 
We have these feelings, these values, these beliefs at our inner core. We have an attitude based on those, and we act accordingly. We are climbing up that Maslowian pyramid of needs, hopefully not stuck in the catch-22. Remember that for the test. We are, we are toying with self-concept, trying to build it by ourselves for ourselves. There's sometimes we deviate from our norms, our actions, and now we fit ourselves into these roles, these roles, all right? You have a role as a sibling, if you have brothers or sisters. You have a role as a daughter or a son. You have a role as a student. You have a role at your part-time jobs at, you know, Fleet Farm or the bank. You have a role out on the field or out on the ice when you skate for that team. You have a different role if you're the captain of the team. And so on and so on and so on. I bet if I asked you, <laughs> test question. I bet if I asked you, you know, what are several roles that you play in any given week, you could come up with a ton of them. I, I bet you're smart. You're smart like that. All right. And that really is the last thing for Chapter 7. The roles that you play that further complicate who you are. All right. So let's talk about the test. Mm. Yummy. Yum, yummy. Yummy. All right. The test is going to go all the way back to that very first lecture. Okay. The very first lecture on intrapersonal communication. Make sure that you took great notes during the series, the series of video lectures. Uh, uh, man, and then that million dollar question, that essay question, who are you? You know I'm going to ask it. You know I'm going to ask it. Okay? All right, think about the entire lecture series when you answer that. All right, campers and camperettes, here's the deal. This is all you have for today. I'm going to open that test up on Monday at, uh, oh, I don't know, 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to open that test up Monday morning when I get up, and it, I'm just going to leave it open, you know, for days. All right, so study. Rewatch, rewatch this stuff if you need to. But do, do keep the smile, all right? You know I'm rooting for you. Keep your stick on the ice. <laughs>